Parkway. Inside this inconspicuous warehouse in South Greensboro is an apparel giant in the world of volleyball. This place is full of t-shirts, sweatshirts, and hoodies emblazoned with volleyball themes. And Chris Britton knows each one of them. And it says, you smell like my knee pads? Because okay. volleyball players have the stinkiest knee pads on really? earth. I and it says, this message brought to you by Lucky Dog Volleyball. Lucky Dog Volleyball is the name of her company. And under Britain's leadership, it secured a multi-year, multi-million dollar contract to become the official championship events merchandiser for USA Volleyball. So what we do is we design the merchandise that they would buy in the pro store at that championship event. Okay. So USA Volleyball runs four major championships a year, right. and we are the merchandisers. Britain's come a long way from becoming a High Point police officer after college in the mid-1990s. That's current High Point police chief Travis Stroud standing beside her on the left. We even aired this story of her leading the police department's summer academy for at-risk youth in 2002. Very bad day. Do you understand me? Yes, ma'am. We start the morning off extremely tough for them. Later, she would head to Greensboro, where she coached the Dudley High School girls basketball team to the state 3A championship in 2009 as part of her nearly 10-year career as a teacher, coach, and administrator in the Guilford County school system. It's exciting for these young ladies. It's exciting for the Dudley community. Then in 2014, she was approached by a friend, Maria Byers, who she had known since growing up in Winston-Salem, to become CEO of Byers' company, Lucky Dog Volleyball. Have some of your coaching, teaching skills really helped you Absolutely. in leading a team here and in what way? I don't allow them to call me their boss. I'm not their boss. I have no interest in telling people what to do. And so I hire people for them to tell me what to do. I hire them for their expertise. But no amount of expertise could have prepared Britain and her team for business to plummet during the pandemic. She says the company survived with the help of government assistance. But then came the racial and social unrest after the death of George Floyd. Britain felt she needed to join other corporate CEOs in releasing a statement condemning racism. So as I was crafting this statement, it occurred to me that the statement would absolutely be everything that I as an individual believed and subscribed to. But I could not say whether or not the folks who worked on my team felt the same way. So she gathered her team once a week, much like what you see here, for what they called race chats, in which everyone shared his or her feelings about the topic. How raw did these conversations get? I would say we got very transparent with each other. Can you give me a specific example of an issue that, regarding race that, that you had to have some difficult conversations about? If you're in a situation, table full of six or eight people, someone makes a racist joke. Do you want to be the person at the table who says, I'm not comfortable with that? Typically, we do the polite thing. But being anti-racist is not always about doing the polite thing. It doesn't mean you have to be rude or disrespectful, but you have to speak up in those moments. The conversations even led to a new line she calls social justice apparel that, among other things, recognizes the Black Wall Street massacre in Tulsa 100 years ago, or features inspirational messages about equality and justice. Lucky Dog hopes to launch this line on its website soon. The company also changed its conversations with its suppliers and other business partners. We ask, well, what are your policies about race? Do you guys discuss race around here? Um, what, do you have anything in place to ensure that you're actively being inclusive and that type of thing? And, you know, at first they're looking at me like, what does this have to do with screen printing? What is your message to the people watching this interview about discussing racial issues and improving race relations? That if we do not have the conversations, things will not improve. We have to be brave enough, but we have to create safe spaces for those conversations to occur.